Thank you. I don't watch a lot of TV, but when I do, I watch reality TV. <laughs> I don't mean all kinds of reality TV, but a certain kind of design challenge TV show. Specifically, I like to watch The Great British Baking Show, <laughs> Top Chef, and Project Runway. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with these shows, let me give you a brief overview. A group of participants comes together, they are assigned something to make, and most of the show is those people making that thing. On The Great British Baking Show, these are Britain's best amateur bakers. On Top Chef, they're chefs. And on Project Runway, it's fashion designers. Their design challenges involve things like baking the perfect Swiss meringue, cooking a main dish featuring unusual cuts of beef, or creating an outfit made of items that are purchased from the dollar store. <laughs> then at the end of the show, a winner for the week is announced, and one person is asked to leave. And what's always been fascinating to me when watching these shows is that when people are asked to leave, they often say some version of the same thing. I have learned so much. I am transformed. I accomplished things I didn't know I was able to do. Now, as a designer of learning environments and someone who studies classroom teaching and a former high school science teacher myself, I have studied for years the ways that teachers and students work together every day to determine what students know and are able to do and how to modify teaching and learning to help students reach learning goals. This is what we sometimes call everyday assessment. This is different from tests and quizzes that measure the amount of learning students might have experienced in a span of time. This is assessment that happens every day while learning is happening in order to enhance and improve the quality of that learning. So from this perspective, statements like, I have learned so much, make me pause and wonder, what is happening in these shows that is supporting such profound learning experiences? <laughs> now here, I will issue a disclaimer. I know there are many things going on in these TV shows, and I am not going to unpack it all. And there are things that happen that don't have implications for classrooms. But I am going to identify four elements of everyday assessment that are illustrated very well in these three shows. Every one of these shows begins with the hosts making it very clear what the participants are going to do that week. Here are a couple of examples from the Great British Baking Show. Create a cake that features at least three different techniques made from chocolate. Bake a sculpture made entirely of bread. The goals are specific, they're interesting, and they stretch the participants to challenge themselves to meet those goals. Second, authentic conversations about progress. My favorite example here is illustrated by Tim Gunn, professor of fashion design at Parsons, and who served as a mentor to the designers on Project Runway until recently. Tim isn't usually a judge. He is there to support and understand what the designers are working on. His signature contribution is to come around to each designer while they're in the workroom and ask them questions. So, tell me what you've done. Tell me about your look. And then he listens intently as the designers explain how they're working on the design for that week. They ask him questions, they tell him what they are uncertain about and what they're struggling with. Tim comes to these conversations with the orientation that he genuinely wants to understand the designer's intentions, the experiences that they bring to the design, and what they want to accomplish. Then he asks targeted questions. What is this? Why did you choose this? How do you feel about how the vinyl is laying on that dress? It also reminds them of the goals. What do you think? How is this high fashion? And at other times, he's a little more direct with suggestions for the designs. Yeah, don't press that into a dart. <laughs> on each of these shows, there are elements of formal and informal collaboration. The chefs, designers, and bakers work together in the same room as they make their designs. Sometimes they're even assigned to teams to work together. They discuss their ideas about what they have been asked to create, and they help each other out. It's routine on Top Chef for one chef to hold out a spoon of soup and ask another chef if it has the right amount of salt, and then make an adjustment. One designer on Project Runway can hold up little fabric flowers and ask someone else, is this too much? 
By working together, they develop a better idea of what's expected and how they can meet those goals. Now, contrary to how these shows are promoted and what we believe that they're only about competition, they're actually also about collaboration too. And the participants form a community while they're working together. Something that I'd especially like to point out about the Great British Baking Show is that the bakers get at least three separate bakes to show what they're able to do each week. For some of these bakes, they even know what the expectation is the following week, and they can go home and practice over and over and over again to get it right until they come to film the next episode. Each episode then has three challenges, a signature challenge, a technical challenge, and the great showstopper. The judges make their decisions based on the results of all three of these challenges, not just a single design or dish, as sometimes happens on Top Chef or Project Runway. So if we see someone's custard failing to set, or the second layer of their cake snapping in half as it pops out of the pan, the bakers often say, I'll try next time. They know that they can be ambitious and not quite accomplish one bake, and it won't be counted against them. This makes each individual bake lower stakes. So what does this mean for our own thinking about educational environments that support everyday assessment? These four elements can help us think about everyday assessment in ways that we might not see otherwise. Helping students see where they are headed, setting clear learning goals, and being specific about those goals has been shown to positively relate to learning outcomes. And phrasing those goals in ways that are engaging for students will help to motivate them to learn especially when we ask questions that are relevant to their experiences and interests. How often do we ask students questions to which we already know the answer? Starting our conversations with real questions, like, how do you know that? Why do you think so? What are you working on? How are you doing? Are all questions that will help our students share what they really know and are able to do. And since we can't know exactly what's in our students' minds, they are likely to surface vital information that can later inform our instruction. And we have to do so in ways where they feel safe to really let us know what they are struggling with so we can support them. We also can give students specific informational guidance to help them move forward in their learning. All everyday assessment doesn't have to go through the teacher. When students work together, they learn from each other and clarify their understandings of goals and expectations. They can help each other to assess their progress toward those goals. And we shouldn't be making consequential decisions on the basis of single tests. Teachers are best positioned to know their students' performance on a daily basis. We should use that daily performance to inform how we support our students, rather than prioritizing their performance on high-stakes tests. When I reflect on these four elements, it reminds me of a teacher I once worked with, we'll call her Alice, who taught sixth grade science at a small middle school in the rural Pacific Northwest. At her school, which was nestled near a lake with the Cascades behind it, Alice worked with her students to understand the answer to a simple but motivating question. What makes some things sink and other things float? The teaching goal was to help students understand the relationship between mass and volume and how it relates to sinking and floating. Alice had helped her sixth graders measure everyday objects like a can of Coke and a hard-boiled egg to determine if they would sink or float. One day, a student, Cole, asked, does this have anything to do with density? Instead of just saying yes or no, Alice asked an authentic question back. That's an interesting word you used, Cole. Tell me what you mean by density. Cole responded, well, it's like if you had a piece of bread with holes and a stack of paper, about the same size, the paper would have more density because it has more mass. Alice asked more questions, working out why it was important that the bread and the paper were the same size, in order to see which was more dense. In this conversation, Alice found out critical information about what Cole really understood about density through an example from his everyday life. Alice then built on this information as she continued to guide students through the unit. As I reflect on my experiences working with Alice and so many other teachers I have learned with and from over the years, it strikes me again and again how everyday assessment like this can start to be almost invisible. But teachers who teach well do it almost all the time, and by watching examples, we can start to see how everyday assessment can actually work to support learning. 
So what has reality TV taught me about everyday assessment? It's taught me that we can find people in engaging in everyday assessment in places that we don't expect. And by having clear goals, asking real questions, collaborating, and having multiple opportunities to try and fail, we can succeed at many challenges. And finally, contrary to probably what every other teacher has told you in your entire life, maybe we just need to watch a little more TV. <laughs> Thank you.